Who is the Mike Tyson of kickboxing? Go Gokan Saki. Yeah, Jesus go. Christ. <laughs> he was one of my favorite guys ever to watch. Saki had the nastiest left hand. He would throw like left hook, left hook, left hook. Bang, bang, bang. With a staggering 72% knockout ratio in 100 fights, this knockout machine destroyed the monsters of his time. Go Saki, you crazy Gokan Saki looked unstoppable in many of his fights, and his career was absolutely legendary. His powerful and technical combinations captured the hearts of fight fans around the world. With perhaps the most spectacular left hook in kickboxing history, he paved the way during the golden era of kickboxing and inspired many fighters today. One fighter idolised him more than anyone else, and this same man is now making a statement for the premier kickboxing organisation glory. Circa man, just a wild fighter. Once Look he sees blood, it's over. He is a powerful knockout artist, just like the great Mike Tyson of kickboxing. But a more accurate analogy is that he is Bada Hari combined with Gokan Saki. You see, Bada is the scariest fighter in kickboxing history. Bada has the highest knockout ratio in kickboxing history at 80%. The exact same knockout ratio of the prodigy we are about to introduce. Even more impressively, this prodigious fighter has heavyweight power despite being a middleweight. It was 113 kilo, and uh, I knocked many people out. I think the middleweight is going to be the same thing. He says, I lost the weight, but I didn't lose the power. Now, who is he exactly? If you see similarities to Gokan Saki, it's because this man is his young cousin. If you see similarities to Badahari, it's because this man is his longtime training partner. That means he's two of the best knockout fighters in kickboxing history fused into one. His name, Serkan Oskarglian. And up to more, I'm ready for everybody. Push! Because I'm a, a real uh, knockout fighter, I'm a killer, but outside the ring, I'm a great warrior. Serkan has an even higher knockout ratio than his cousin at a staggering 80% knockout ratio across 50 fights. He also has an extremely impressive win rate at 87%. Could he be the Mike Tyson of kickboxing in this era? Some fight fans certainly think so. You be the judge after witnessing his incredible fights. He even does Mike Tyson impressions to Bob Sam during post-fight challenges. Sign the contract, big boy. Sign the contract. One thing is for sure, he possesses next level explosiveness with his hands, and he is absolutely merciless with his pressure. If you watch Gokan Saki, Badahari, and Serkan Osgarglian together, it's clear to see that they are cut from the same cloth. Serkan Osgarglian has the same training crew as Badahari. SB Gym, Coach Saeed, every, you know, SB Gym fighter attacks the body very well. Badahari, you know. In all of his fights, he hunts a knockout and fights with 100% on all shots. Yeah. Nothing soft, everything's hard. This signature knockout style is as captivating as it comes. Made popular by legendary fighters such as Ernesto Hoost, Ramon Deckers, Badahari, and countless other monsters. As you can see, the Dutch style is spectacular, brutal, and ruthless. Serkan certainly represents the best of this style. You can see Serkan, who we keep talking about, is that old school Dutch kickboxer. He wants to knock you out. From the very start of a fight, he brings monstrous heat. Alrighty. That was the first shot of the fight! But no man with an 80% knockout ratio against the best fighters can do it without being calculated. Once he gains momentum, he becomes unstoppable. And once he catches that energy, don't stop in Serkan. With supreme confidence, he has no fear to trade shots with anyone in the world, making his style incredibly entertaining and exciting. This is how he paved the way to a title shot within five fights at Glory Kickboxing. There has never been a boring Serkan fight, and it's how this heavy hitter is loved by even his opponents and fight fans around the world. Yeah, I don't think you can have a boring Serkan fight. <laughs> Win or lose, he's, he's bringing it. Now let's look at how he's similar to some of the most powerful fighters in kickboxing history. Like his legendary cousin, Gokan Saki, he has the ability to knock out the monsters of his time with one shot. Also like the two division champion Alex Pereira, Serkan can pressure you to where he wants in order to land a jumping knee or stiff knee to the face. 
resulting in a spectacular knockout. Serkan can also pressure his opponents into exchanging, but when he does this, he's baiting them into a trap. That is, once his opponents decide to trade, that's exactly when Serkan counters them with thunderous blows. Serkan wasn't always the calculated powerhouse counterfighter like he is now. During his younger days, you'll see fearless aggression and the heart of a warrior, but not the technique. But entering glory in 2021 is where he truly evolved and became a spectacular fighter. Personally, I love seeing this type of evolution, and this prodigy is just entering into his prime. You see, Serkan went from being a wild swinger, fearlessly trading against any opponent, to being a calculated and powerful counterfighter. The old Serkan probably would get aggressive, try to rip your head off, but next thing you know, he's really evolving and developing into a, a great champion. Explosive power, we free some from s and look at him go! When he sees blood, it's over. Serkan's career has been particularly interesting because he's done something very few people do. That is, he dropped from heavyweight to fight at middleweight. But surprisingly, he did not lose the ability to knock out opponents. In his first fight in glory, he claimed that he kept the heavyweight power despite being at middleweight. It was 130 kilo and uh, I knocked many people out and I think in middleweight it's going to be the same thing. But did he hold true to this claim? It may be his glory debut, but plenty of experience. Yeah, and this is actually first time here at middleweight. He says, I lost the weight, but I didn't lose the power. He said, if I land clean, you're going to sleep. Yes, and in absolutely spectacular fashion. His debut at Glory was absolutely crazy. This knockout was so spectacular that Glory called it the debut of the year. This Dutch champion had the debut of the year in 2021 with a 58 second knockout. Even with nearly a 40 kilogram weight drop and fighting at the highest level, he knocked out his opponent within a minute. So how did he do it? His opponent, Matt Baker, was trained by the Muay Thai legend, Jong Sanan Fairtex. Baker is arguably the best Muay Thai middleweight in America. Coming out of a Muay Thai style that is adaptable to kickboxing, Baker was scoring well, but it didn't matter against Serkan. As you can see, Serkan's game is the pressure fighters. It doesn't matter if the opponent is scoring on him, he doesn't seem to feel it at all. As he walks forward, this forces the opponent to pick shots off off the back foot. This eventually forces Baker to trade with Serkan, which is exactly what he wants. Just one punch from Serkan can nullify five of his opponent's strikes. When his opponent inevitably needs to fire back, that's when an opening is created. Like his cousin, the legendary Gokan Saki, they create openings for the powerful counter left hook, and that's exactly what happened here. As Serkan pressures from the long range, he waits to fire the perfect counter. In this fight, it was the powerful left hook counter over the opponent's cross. Even though Baker landed the shots, Serkan shifted his head off the center line to avoid the damage, while delivering a knockdown blow. As you can see, it didn't matter that the opponent hit him. Serkan knows he has a better chin and can return with more power. Despite landing a flush blow that rocked his opponent, Baker was a real warrior and kept fighting. But Serkan smelled the finish and went for it. Chasing his opponent around the ring with wild shots, Serkan was not able to finish Baker despite landing many heavy shots. After throwing 20 shots, Serkan knew he'd have to be more calculated to deliver the final blow. His technique of choice was the hand trap into the left hook. Against the high guard or a retracting cross, this technique will expose the face for a knockout blow. This technique is widely used by the goat of Muay Thai, Sanchai. By dragging the guard, you create a clear entry for the cross. In doing so, you also leverage the shot by pulling them into the strike. It is perfect against a stiff guard or panicking opponent. Swing up. Oh, yeah. This fight showed the kickboxing world that Serkan has arrived, and he made a statement declaring that he's ready for anyone. Watch this guy, and I'm ready for everybody. Push. In Serkan's second fight, he'd face the number one ranked fighter in the division, Ertugrul Bayrak. Right before the fight, 
he made a big statement. Sirkan Azkoglayan said he likes to give out sleeping pills to his opponent and promises to do the same against Ertugal Bayrak. Considering Bayrak is the number one ranked opponent, who also beat the current middleweight champion, Donovan Visa, this is quite the statement. Despite all this, he winked at the opponent before the fight started, showcasing supreme confidence. When the fight started, Serkan again showed no fear, throwing big power shots right away. This is the mark of supreme confidence and knowing that he has the gift of FU power. In a wild exchange, he'd throw a jumping scissor knee to the head but lose balance. After some more wild exchanges and intense pressure, Serkan was able to lure Bayrak into throwing a power cross. He again used his signature hand trap. Head to head range, mixing the body. He's, he's all kinds of messed up, Joe. Look at his body. When Bayrak threw the cross, Serkan hand trapped with his lead arm and delivered a thunderous left hook, rocking his opponent. This is a classic setup by a knockout artist. You see, Serkan consistently leads his technical opponents into a brawl in order to capitalize on their aggression. He knows with certainty that he can exchange power shots better. Miraculously, despite being rocked, Bayrak was able to get up and keep fighting. But as Serkan hunted the finish, Bayrak was able to survive but got hit with the signature hand trap multiple times. Serkan was super aggressive and wild in chasing the finish, but Bayrak showed why he was the number one ranked fighter. Here comes Serkan now, this is probably where he gets a little bit more wild. When Serkan is more calculated with his shots, his strikes are nasty. Keep that distance, but those power punches from that southpaw from, by, from Serkan are nasty. There it goes again. He was able to pressure his opponent and execute his signature hand trap technique several times throughout the fight. And he loves that guard manipulation. We saw him do that against Matt Baker, Oscar Glyant, try to swipe their guard down from their face and land a hook. Yeah. It's rare to see a fighter throw heavy shots the entire fight. Perhaps only Badahari has done so effectively at the highest level in kickboxing. Scoring at will! And look at how much power Serkan throws behind his punches. But it's not surprising because he is bad as teammate after all. In round two, he rocks Bayrak again with a lead right hook into left cross. Near the end of the round, Serkan lands a left cross that snaps his opponent's head back. Early finishes. How do you react? In round three, he got knee to the nuts, but like the great black Bruce Lee, he fought on with no problem. This is how we know he has the heart of a champion. From jumping knees to relentless combinations, Serkan showed in this fight that he is the real deal. He tried to finish the fight, but ultimately Bayrak was too tough. Big punches here from Oscar Klein, who's trying to finish this with an exclamation point, but that will do it really good. Oh, he looks fantastic. Good pressure, good power. You know, still that fun fighter we like to see. Those are the type of fighters we want in glory. The one who's come forward, go for knockouts. After defeating Bayrak in his last fights, Serkan became the number one ranked middleweight in glory. He would meet Cesar Almeida, another heavy hitter, and the winner would fight for the title. It was exciting to see fire met with fire. But it's in this fight that Serkan would be tested for the first time in glory. Just as Serkan was going for his signature hand trap technique, Caesar was fully prepared for it and rolled the shot to counter with his own overhand. This put Serkan down for the first time in his career in glory, but he would get up like a champion and wing to the camera. Serkan survived the rest of the round, but in round two, he would still be rocked and got knocked down by a monster overhand again. But like any real champion would, Serkan kept on fighting. After two knockdowns, he was determined to keep fighting. Continuing to exchange shots with Caesar, the commentators applauded his warrior spirit. Serkan gonna fight fire with fire! Serkan will go out on his shield, it looks like. He even got head kicked to the ground, but for some reason, the ref didn't rule it a knockdown. Oh, now the head kick! No, they're not calling that a knockdown! <laughs> the definition of one. He got up and presses Caesar for the rest of the fights, showing how good Serkan's gas tank is. Although Serkan lost by decision and his chance for a title shot here, he showed us that he is championship material. He stayed in the fight and controlled the pace even after multiple knockdowns. 
If he makes adjustments, there's no reason he cannot win the Glory Kickboxing title in the future. In this comeback fight, Serkan was ready to make a big statement. In his next fight against a jacked opponent named Yuri D'Souza, Serkan came out like a man possessed, and in under 10 seconds, he put Yuri down with a huge uppercut. Got a knockdown right away in the opening 10 seconds. He doesn't know where he is. That was the first shot of the fight. Then Serkan went on a huge flurry. When he sees blood, it's over. He's using his movement, his high guard to get out, but Serkan's just an aggressive fighter that's just gonna go after you. Look at him swing. He would also showcase that his granite chin is back. More, give some back. Don't give him too much room. Oh, big left hand. In this fight, we can see Serkan again evolving and growing as a fighter, using his pressure and ring control to set up his jump knees. He also used the signature hand trap technique again, that then makes him start throwing. Stank your leg a little bit. You automatically see when Serkan rocks you, he just gets a second wind and he just picks it up. There he splits the knee, Mel's guard. And then he just waits, he's patient. He's looking for the bomb, he's ready to set it up. Boom! What a shot, look at that. In this fight, Serkan landed four epic knockdowns. One of them even blew his opponent out of the ring. He's gonna get his down. Down. The final knockdown was delivered by a great knee right up the middle. In this fight, we saw how well Serkan integrates his southpaw boxing with the rear knee to the head. When it looks like he's about to punch, he instead uses his hands to lever for the knee. The opponent will automatically brace forward, and even worse, lean into the strike for double the impact. This perfectly sets up the knockout blow. After dominating in such fashion, Serkan calls out the reigning glory champion, Donovan Visa. Being the new Mike Tyson at kickboxing, he modeled exactly what his idol said. So, I keep forward going, and my next step is the belt, so the champ. Sign the contract, big boy! Sign the contract! Although to earn a shot at the title, he needed to go through one more monster. In this fight, Serkan was all about serious business. You can tell when Braun tried to touch gloves at the end of the first round, and Serkan just walked away like a cold man. Braun was visibly sad. This fight, Serkan has shown how evolved he's become. Now he's very technical, and rather than throwing wild combinations, they are now clean. Throughout the first round, Serkan showed great punching combinations mixed with sharp knees. Even more impressively, he started to throw the left roundhouse effectively. In southpaw versus orthodox matchups, the southpaw fighter has a great advantage when throwing rear-sided attacks. This comes in the form of rear punches, rear roundhouses and rear knees. Some of the most feared strikers in history are southpaw and use the open stance to their absolute advantage. During the round, Sergei landed a flush spinning hook kick, but like a true beast, Serkan felt nothing and kept pressing forward. To start the finish of this fight, Serkan read patterns beautifully. After Braun landed a nice cross to the body, he tried the same technique again, but was met with a perfect counter uppercut into a rear hook combination. This sent Braun flying back, and Serkan remained calculated in hunting the finish. No longer was he rushing in with wild swings. This time Serkan was wise and took a calculated approach. Yep, see now he's picking his shots, looking for the knees. To send Braun into the canvas, Serkan would land his signature hand trap technique again. He stayed patient, he stayed technical, he picked his shots, he was able to explode and get the finish. The old Serkan probably would get aggressive, try to rip your head off, but next thing you know, he's really evolving and developing into a, a great champion. And this knockout is a testament to the evolution of Serkan, and now he is the number one ranked challenger once again. After the fight, Serkan and Big Mike embraced with a big hug. And a big hug from Big Mike. Yeah, that's the moments you love and share it. I wait for this moment. Everybody knows and everybody calls me the sleeping pills. And it's not a lie. I wait for the moment, I have patience, and I listen good to my corner. I want the title. Give me the title shot! After cementing his title shots, instead of training right away for the title, Serkan showed how selfless he is. Just days after this fight, Serkan's home country, Turkey, was hit with the strongest earthquake he has ever seen. A devastating earthquake hitting his home country of Turkey. 
He told us he's headed straight there to help with the recovery efforts. We salute him on that and, of course, on his victory tonight as well. I want to be happy, but right now I can't be happy because what happens in Turkey last week, it catch me hard, man. I had a hard training camp, but we end the training camp with bad news. So I want to give this fight for my people in Turkey. On the 17th of June, Serkan will get his well-deserved title shot against the champion Donovan Visa. Donovan is an absolute wrecking ball, so this match is sure to be fireworks. This highly anticipated match will take place on Glory Collision 5, and the event is super stacked with multiple champions fighting on it. Make sure to tune in for an epic night of fights. Thank you for watching another episode of Lawrence Kinchin Striking Breakdowns. The best way to support us is to simply watch another video.